not fed and everything. And they want me to take this dog home. I took it home though. Good but on. needless to say, I didn't even think what I was in for. <laughs> took her home, yeah. went to work. When I came home, everything was chewed up. Yeah. Everything was chewed up. And they said, you need a, a dog psychologist. I could honestly fix that in a okay. single session. So well, this was a lot of years ago. Yeah. And I said, OK. So they said, the first thing you're doing, with what that dog went through, that dog should never be by itself. That yeah. dog needs to be somebody else. I don't care how much love you give that dog. So my mother was down the hall in another apartment. So she had a dog. Mm -hmm. So we kept the dogs together. Had no problem after that. But yeah. the problem that I had, yeah. every time taking that dog out for a walk, did she pull? She would see a man. Mm -hmm. She went ballistic. Yeah, right. I had to really hold her back. She would gotcha. growl and growl. You know, that on that went on for about eight or nine years. Any man that kept by, it was terrible. I had to watch her closely. But it took all these years for her to surpass her emotions, what she went through, mm -hmm. just like it would be with a person. And I felt so bad. Yeah for it, so bad. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. So, that. <laughs> <laughs> so what else uh, happens with, with behaviors that we could tell the people or something that I should know too that is familiar? We went over the smells, how yeah. the cat reacts. I mean, I can go through cats and dogs really quite briefly. With cats, they need a sense of esteem, which is linked to altitude. So give them a cat tower to go up. If you've got two cats that are feuding, get two towers. Allow them their own space. If they're feuding, get them two litter boxes and feed them separate to each other so they can have their own space. And that's pretty much the goal of okay. most so, of the So the I should stuff. have those poles for them to climb yeah. up or not necessarily? Yeah, I mean, it depends. Um, things that cats, I believe, need are you know, direct exposure to sunlight. They need to see outside. They need to know that the outside world is in there. It, it links to their My estate. place is very bright. Oh, good. Sun, very good. Sun, lots of sun. Then I would just say put a cat tower near the window. And it sounds like your cats are feuding, even if they're not making it too known. So what I would actually recommend is just get two similar and just put them far enough away, maybe on the either side of the window, so they can each have one. Well, what is, it's a long window. Mm -hmm. And they don't go to the window at the same time, I notice. And when you say that, are they going to the same spot but at different times? Yes. There you go. See, it's She's territorial. Doing, except for her. She is complacent. She is very comfortable no matter what she does. Mm -hmm. She could care less. Gotcha. She picks her spot and she just lays there and she curls. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't curl. I yeah. notice that. Gotcha. He lays out. She's very warm and I notice she curls up like a ball. Then it's possible she has the might but he wants to be the bully. Because yeah. if she knows that she's got the strength and she knows she can take him if it's required, then she doesn't have to be worried. But it sounds like he's presenting the challenge frequently. He's, he's bringing the challenge to her. Yeah, Would that he's be... trying. He's yeah. tried so yeah. hard. But I all, tell me if I'm right or wrong, it's always better to have more than one pet. I wouldn't say or not. always. I wouldn't say always. In Tell me why. Cases, uh, again, we're talking about the personality of a cat. Sometimes I'll encounter cats that just don't want to have a bar of it. They really just would prefer like to be alone. Like people want to be alone, right? Exactly. So it just depends, honestly. And that's what I do. I look at the, the case that we have in front of us, and I do okay. my best to identify what's going on for that case for that, that client. So that's new too. Now, another thing which yeah. they say, they say, Cats see in the dark, so you don't have to let a light on at night. And then somebody told me, that's all wrong. No. Cats need a light at night, and they want a light on. Tell me the truth on that one. They can pretty much, I mean, anyone in photography will respect this. Their aperture, their iris, can pretty much go all the way out. I think the, there's a rating. I think it's maybe under 2 to 3% of the iris still remains. It's full exposure. It's literally just drenching the retina of this cat. Okay, so they see. Yeah, they, they see the light. They also see in a spectral um, range that's you know far outside of ours. We we have we can't see ultraviolet. We can't see infrared. And I believe that cats can actually go, you know, further than we can on the on the spectral uh, range. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they're, they're pretty amazing, and their ears are phenomenal. 
phenomenal. So it's, I don't know if they actually use it the same way bats do, but cats in the dark, I mean, you can jump online, there's, there's night vision footage, you can see these guys, they know exactly where they're going. Yeah, those ears, even a dog, the slightest sound, yep. little sound, yep. and another thing, with toys on the floor, uh, I know there's so much to talk about. I say this all the time. I go on and on and on. They say colors. They like certain colors in toys, and some colors they don't. What are the colors? Well, I don't know exactly what the colors, but that would make sense. When you do an eye test at the optometrist, there's a, a test where they put the red and the green, which is brighter. Have you ever done one of those at the optometrist? Yeah. We have certain frequencies right. that we're going to pick up at the strongest. Do you think number. cats pick up with, or dogs with bright lights, or? I don't know for sure, but red and green would actually make sense. And you know, I have cats that happen to love their orange toys. So orange. I'm just guessing here. I don't actually know. I'm not a cat ophthalmologist here, so that would be guesswork for me completely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he, I, I know that catnip in your toys is just send some bananas. So. I have a lot of cat toys and everything. Small ones. Anyhow. Noise, yeah. It's been great. Thank you. Okay. And uh, very informative. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure, uh, you know, our people watching, uh, this was interesting to you, and I hope it helped you with your animals at home, too. I know it's a big help to me. And uh, we'll just continue loving our gorgeous little pets and everything on our great picture there, which I adore. Wonderful. Okay, and let's just keep giving lots and lots of love to these animals because Always. they deserve it. Always. Okay, and I thank Tuiho, Channel 36. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Julie. And thank you, Eon. Thank you, Lauren. We have to have you on again. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.